optimize means to get the most out of something okay? or the least out of something depending on if you want to maximize or minimize these are real worldy kind of problems these are a huge part of business calc if you take business calc and you're going to be a business major uh, optimization so you'll see a lot of application problems including business check out this here um, you start your own business you're making t-shirts and you sell them in open-air markets your first day when you set your price at fifteen dollars you sell four shirts okay now uh, as any good business person would do they would kind of figure out is that the best price point to maximize revenue so over the next couple of weeks or a month you tweak your price a little and see what happens if you find that every time you increase the price by a dollar you lose two sales then would you make a table showing all the possible cases? I'll start you here. When you, when you set the price at $15, the number you sell is 40. R stands for revenue, how much you take in. Revenue is not the same as profit. How are they different? Profit is, profit is revenue minus expenses or minus cost okay so we're not looking into profit here don't say profit there's no profit to this problem okay it's revenue how would you find how much revenue you take in then multiply yes yeah, fifteen dollars per shirt times forty shirts okay so revenue is the number you sell times the price so in that case that would be six hundred at that price point you sell six hundred uh, when you Increase the price by a dollar, you sell two fewer shirts. So, for example, when the price is 16, you'd sell 38, and making the revenue blank. Okay, finish the table. You may use a calculator. And we'll move along. How are we doing? Yeah. All right. 
Okay. Are getting that? Uh, looking at your table, would you say this function, this relationship is concave up or concave down? When you look at concavity, you, look, you didn't get these? No? 18 times 2 of 4 is 6 12 2. 18 times 2 of 4 is 6 12 2. Right. 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 It would help if I know my right and my left. <laughs> this is uh, 6 12, you said? Oh, I, you're right. Sorry, I copied it down wrong. She had the right. Answer. And then 608. Sorry, I looked at the wrong row or column. Okay. Uh, yours is right, Michaela. Sorry, I just looked at the wrong place. 572. 52. Did you say concave up or concave down? What? Yeah, the amount, the change in the change, it's changing, so it's definitely increasing, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. So the, the changes are decreasing, so the derivative is decreasing, so the second derivative is negative. Right? Okay, um, it is, the hardest part for students is the algebra 1 element, and I do mean algebra 1. Would you please write the relationship for number sold is a function of price. Number depends on price. I get to choose what price I set. I don't get to choose how many I sell, but I get to choose what price is. So number depends on price. Would you write the equation for number as a function of price? You can see it's linear. If you ignore the revenue, which is definitely curving because the changes are different, the revenue, the price and the number are always the same rate of change. I'm sorry. Uh, one and two, right? So it's always a linear relationship, but the change is always the same. And you therefore can write a linear equation. Please do that, and we'll talk about that. In a minute. Whether you use point slope or slope intercept, that's up to you. I think the first thing I just did do is decide what's y, what's x. It's a delta. Pay attention to signs. Determine the slope? Negative two. Yeah, you lose two sales for every one dollar increase, so that is negative two. After that, did you go a point slope or slope intercept approach? You don't really in the table see the y intercept. You don't have a zero case in the table, do you agree? So it seems like point slope would be more logical, although you could definitely put in. Well, instead of y equals mx plus b, if you wanted to work from that, instead of y and x, you'd be using number as a function of price, right? And you could plug in the slope and a case and find the b. Did you do that or did you do point slope? Point slope, okay, so that's logical. 
instead of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, it's uh, number sold minus number sold case, slope price minus price case. So let's say we use negative 2 for the slope. Although it was a pretty easy table to make, the case that I can be most sure about is what? The one they gave you. Okay, so that's probably the safest one to work with. Although, again, it's not very complicated to do on your own, and you can have faith in your points. The one that you you probably use is the one that's given. Uh, so that would be something like n minus, is that going to be 15 or 40 then? 40 is the number sold, and p minus... 15, all right? Now, if you were to look at this in a slightly different case, can we do some manipulating of this? Okay. If you're really on your game, you understand exactly what's going on in that equation. The number sold is starts at 40, and we decrease the number sold by two for every change in price of a dollar. Now, wouldn't this find how much change of price we did? Yeah. yeah. And so um, this equation all makes sense. That's the last form that really makes sense to me. If you keep distributing, which I think we will do, 40 minus 2p uh, plus 30. The point slope version of this, negative, or slope intercept other, sorry, negative 2 P plus 70, that really doesn't have real, real world meaning. What kind of, what's the limitation? Think about the y -intercept. That would be saying if, if the price is zero, you sell 70. In other words, if you gave them away, you could give them away 70, right? Uh, usually a model like this would only be in a certain way. They wouldn't just say, use it forever. They'd say it's only applicable in this region. Uh, so you would usually have a domain attached to that. All right. Well, that said, that's cool. I have a number sold function. Now, the point is where we're headed here. Uh, revenue depends on both number sold and the price. Do you agree? In fact, we found that revenue is number sold times the price. Now, the end goal will be to maximize the revenue. We want to get, like good capitalists, we want to get the most money we can, right? To maximize revenue, though, or to find where R prime goes positive to negative, calculus-wise, I don't like to take derivatives on three variables if I, can, if I can avoid it. So you usually would substitute to get it down to two variables. Well, what do you have as another NP relationship? Just problem with that, right? So you can plug in in place of n negative 2p plus 70 times p and say the revenue is negative 2p squared plus 70p. That's a downward opening parabola. Does that verify our concave down idea? Yes. It does. Okay. Does it also tend to yield a maximum R? Downward opening parabola. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. Would you use calculus? Now you can actually find the top of the parabola by pre-calculus finding the vertex. Do you agree? But we're going to use calculus. So find the maximum revenue by finding where r prime goes positive to negative. We find maximums by using usually the first derivative test. We could do the second derivative test, but. So did you get uh, something like 17.5? We did. Is that a maximum or a minimum? If I sign test r prime before and after, before that would be a small p like zero. What's r prime? Positive, implying that the revenue is increasing in that region. Until I get to 17.5, I'm 
I'm jacking up the price just the right way until I get to $17.50. After that, the derivative goes negative, and so revenue starts to fall off. You, you price yourself out, you're telling you to jack the price up too much, and you're losing sales. So it seems like then the best price is to set the price at $17.50. What is the maximum revenue then? How do I find the max revenue? Yeah, where do I plug that seventeen fifty in? Yeah, we could go in this equation, but that has both. This is the best place to go. Revenue at seventeen fifty is negative two seventeen fifty squared plus seventy times seventeen fifty, and that have money. So you get a money problem. You should always run to the nearest cent. Uh, when do you get there? I would imagine it's somewhere between six. Say again. Six hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so you'd say your price at seventeen dollars and fifty cents for the ship. You with me? One more thing before uh, I let you give this one on your own. When I say our prime, um, because this is so close to related rates, people kind of bleed those ideas together. There is no time component to this. I'm not talking about how price changes over time. I'm talking about how revenue changes as I change price. The two variables are my change in price and let's see how that changes revenue. There's, there's no time, so I should not see DRDT. It's not changing revenue with time. It's changing revenue with price. Understood? OK, try, try, try one all the way through on your own. I compartmentalized it above, broke it into pieces, um, now, that's not actually how it's going to be on a homework or a test. They just say optimize. And you go through that same process. You get an equation, you use your calculus. But getting the equation is the hard part. Feel free to work together, talk a little bit. It is expected that you use calculus to find the max, not your calculator on the max of the graph.
definitely check your equation before you run your calculus to make sure you're agreeing with somebody in the equation. <laughs> That's my number sold function. Do you do you agree? Or did I mess up? No, it's too much. I don't know. I, I definitely make lots of mistakes. Did you get a negative two for a slope? No. Okay. I did I make a mistake? I Increase the sales by 10 if I decrease the price by 5. So change in number is plus 10, change in price is minus 5. But the net result is a negative slope. 2. Yes? Think of that as lose 2 sales for every 1 cent increase. Do we not agree? Okay. What are you thinking? I think I went too fast and I should have given you more time to flail around. I don't want to do it for you. Do you so what's the hard part writing the number sold equation? The line equation. That's usually the part for students that is the hardest part. Once you get the calculus, it's the calculus is easy. Uh, so if you didn't get the line equation, what did you do wrong? Did you identify the variables correctly? Okay. Did you find the slope correctly? Okay. So figure out why this. I, you know, if I, I get to tell you, you know, the a lot of the BC students can just look at it and say, oh, the slope is there. I just don't. My mind just doesn't work that way. So I really have to show this work kind of methodically. I know slope is changing y over change in x. In this case, y is number sold and x is price. So if I look at change of each of those and put those in, I finally get my slope. And aggravating that other people can do that so quickly, but it is what it is, okay? So negative 2 is my slope, um, methodically. After that, it's the initial case, and I usually use the initial case, um, and the slope I found in a point slope -y kind of form. But because we're going to then substitute that in later, I clean that up. I, you know, I don't always, you know, on a tangent line problem, I don't clean up. I don't care. I just leave it.
but on this we use it in another step so it's worth doing the cleanup so that's why I cleaned it up into slope intercept form so substitution can be used because the whole idea is to get that relationship and get revenue in one variable only. Once you get revenue in one variable only, you have a parabola and the calculus goes swell. You don't have to justify the first derivative test. You should be, you should at least look mentally, would you say that, wouldn't you say that before 125, this would be small and so positive, and after the rate of change would be negative, so that is a max. You should think about it and look, but it's not a prove it kind of thing. It's just a think about it. Allah? Last but not least, make sure you answer the question. There, the question might be one of two things. What is the price that maximizes revenue? Or what is the maximum revenue? What did they ask for? Uh, what price will maximize revenue? So did I answer the question? I did. This is the price that maximizes revenue. Had they asked what's the maximum revenue, then I would have had to put that into my revenue equation. All right. That is just one type of optimization problem. There are many. So let's get practice on different types. Uh, this is going slow. All right. So we have making a can. The top and bottom need to be stronger than the sides. Uh, the metal is thicker gauge, so or higher gauge. So the thought cost of materials will differ. Given the cost per square centimeter for the side material is one cent, and the cost of the top and bottom is five cents per square centimeter, make a can that holds a liter, but is going to cost the least. Okay. Now I didn't give you the kind of thought process in a formal way on the last one. We just kind of broke it down. But this is the thought process. What are you trying to optimize? It's so often the case that you just you just don't you don't even know what you're trying to do. Yes. Um, we're actually answering questions on the first two. Do you just write like for instance one twenty five, or do you just say like um, there is a max at one twenty five dollars because you do not have to justify. Just yeah. If I say justify your conclusions or something, then you would have to do it. Okay. Now. Um, this, I, for example, on this problem, I get a lot of people saying, well, I want to minimize surface area. Is that what you want to minimize? It's not. What do you want to minimize? You want to minimize the cost. It says right there, minimize cost. Okay. So establish what you're trying to optimize. Optimize can be find the best or the least, the max or the min. We're trying to minimize cost. All right. Now, you can't minimize cost or run calculus on cost if you don't have an equation for cost. So now you get an equation for cost. This is where, by far, the majority of the work comes. That's the hard part. It's not the calculus that's hard. It's the algebra. It's the getting the equation that's hard, the model. Try not to rush it, okay? If you start general, if you, if you just look at the totality of it, you say, oh, my God, it's so big, I can't do it. Okay, but if you break it into little things, what do you, what do you start with? Well, I know when I say start general, I might do something like, I know that the cost depends on the top and the bottom and the sides. I, yeah, I understand the one cent, five cent, all that's great. I'll get into that later. But start with a clue. Just start general and then get to the specific, right? If I want the cost of the top, I know the cost of the top and bottom is five cents per square meter, centimeter. So does that mean it's just five cents, or would I need to do more? Use the units as a guide. Five, cost means I want this to be cost. It's five cents. Let's go with cents. Five cents per square centimeter is that cost. Are the units there cost? No, it's cost per square centimeter. So I would need to then do what? Yeah, I would need to then say how many square centimeters do I? And that's the area. How much area to the top and the bottom? Assuming it's a cylindrical can. 2 pi r squared. Okay. Now, in terms of units, wouldn't that be square centimeters? The square centimeters would go away, and I have 6. Boom. That seems to be working, right? 
height, now the cost to the size. I know the ratio for cost per square, little square, is one cent per square centimeter. But again, I then have to say, well, how many square centimeters to a size? Think back to your algebra one days. When you do the side, isn't it about an unwrapped rectangle? What's the bottom edge of that rectangle? Circumference, 2 pi r. And what's the height? Uh, I guess it's h, yeah, good point. Good job. Uh, so 2 pi r h. You follow? Looking at this then, and maybe now dumping the units. This isn't science class. I'm just, it's just getting busy at that point. So I'm getting 10 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h for my cost function. And I will get All right, now, fundamental idea of calculus we just talked about. Do we want to maximize cost now or do something else first? This would be derivative on three variables. If we can help it, we want to get it down to two variables. Is there some other relationship, if possible, sub some other relationship to get a function of one variable. Cost is a function of R or H, but not both. So what's another relationship? Volume, yeah. The volume needs to be 1,000 cubic centimeters. So 1,000 needs to equal the volume of a can, which is? R squared H. Now we can solve that for either R or H, but I think H would probably be easier. So we can put in H's place, 1,000 over pi R squared. We. So then cost becomes 10 pi R squared plus 2 pi R times 1,000 over pi R squared. Again, I, don't, I want to make my life easy, so I'm going to do a little cleanup. 10 pi r squared plus 2,000. The pi's drop out, and I get r to the negative 1, yeah? All right, now that's a derivative I can take, no problem. So I want to minimize or maximize. Which one? Minimize. So I want to know where c prime goes negative to positive for a minimum changes in a decreasing way, then starts to increase. So C prime is 20 pi r minus 2,000 over r squared. I need to know where this is zero or undefined for critical numbers before I can sign test. So I don't like fractions, and I don't like, or I don't like sums. I need to sign test on a product if I can. So if I get a common denominator, it'd be 20 pi r cubed minus 2,000. Right? In terms of critical numbers, um, C prime is undefined if R is 0, but obviously that's stupid because that's not a very good can, is it? It's, that's really a minimum volume. Uh, it, or, and it's just irrational. It's ridiculous. So C prime equals 0 at 20 pi R cubed minus 2,000 equals 0. That would be pi r cubed equals 2,000 over 20, or 100. So r is the cube root of 100 over pi. Now, 100 over pi would probably be about 33-ish. Cube root would be about 3-ish. OK, so I imagine that's 3, something like that. Um, in terms of around that, that's about 3. Before and after that, before that, you would have a small r, so this would be, this derivative would be negative. And after that, r would be big, and so then you'd start to get positive. Is that a min? The rate of change going negative to positive? Yeah. All right. So as far as minimizing the cost, if we let r equal the cube root of 100 over pi centimeters, and the height is 
what's the height where I go to find the height? Yeah, right there. It's a thousand over pi times the square of that pi. That's in centimeters. That will minimize cost. Alright, now it's really just using it as a reference. I would love for you to have time to practice this one of those on your own, but there will be one on the homework soon, so you will get practice. Use your notes as a reference. Okay, these are the ones I'm giving you. There could be a lot of different types of problems, but I chose the, the big ones, the most common ones. Okay? This is going to be rough. All right, so a rectangle is to be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 10. This is also a common problem. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I imagine the phrase analytical geometry doesn't mean much to you, but uh, just so you have an appreciation for the history of mathematics. Before, you know, Rene Descartes in about 1500 or so, geometry, algebra, totally separate, no relation. Okay, uh, you know, if you you could solve equations, they had quadratic equations and they solved. Um, but then over here was figures. The idea, just so you appreciate the idea of instead of hey, here's a circle, um, and here's my algebra, here's some algebra. By putting a coordinate plane to space and allowing you to define x as this number or that number, it really then marries those two ideas. Not only do I have the figure, a circle in geometry, but I have an equation that makes that figure. So the, the idea of analytical geometry is it really amounts to the coordinate plane. It's the marriage of algebra to geometry and being able to make an equation for a geometric figure. It's a pretty huge advance in math. Uh, in this case, then, you're talking a geometry problem on a surface, but you want to get that algebra in there to get the equation. So a rectangle is inscribed in a semicircle of radius 10. Now, it would be logical, then, to, in order to get equations to this, let's put it on the coordinate plane. and then easiest version of the semicircle would be the one centered at the origin. Agree? And it has a radius of 10. A rectangle is inscribed, so that means inside. What's the maximum area of the rectangle? Well, here's the idea. That rectangle could be here, or here, or here, or here. All those are different possible rectangle configurations, but they don't all have the same area. There is a best rectangle that maximizes the, the area of the rectangle. What is it? All right, so the process then is ask what you're trying to optimize. What are you trying to optimize? Area. Maximize area. Then get an equation. What's an equation for the area? Now, I put this on the coordinate plane so I didn't have to work base and height. I could use x and y. What's the base? x. I think you say x, and yet it is. So imagine if I said that I could draw a rectangle here, right? What's the base of that? Is it 5? It's 10. So it's not x, it's. 2x, okay. 2x, and the height is y. Now that is a single y. I went from the axis up, and so it's a single y. That's then three variables. You want to get it down to two. What's the other relationship? This is not a trick question where they're trying to give you extraneous information. There's information they give you that we haven't used yet. What is it? What haven't we used yet? We haven't used a circle in any way. Do you agree with the rectangle right now? You're not using the circle yet. So the circle's got to be in there somewhere. What does the circle do for me? Yeah, it tells me the, well, what's the equation of the circle? X squared plus Y squared equals 10 squared, right? Um, now, it's up to you which one you use, but I'm going to use y. y is the square root of 100 minus x squared. Notice it's positive only because it's the top half of the circle. We? Okay. So then, if I go to substitute that in, 
then my area equation starts to be 2x root 100 minus x squared. All right. Now I have an equation of two variables, not three. Calculus is ready now. I want to find where a prime goes. Positive two, negative. The derivative is easy, the algebra is hard. So, a prime, first stays the same. What's the derivative of the second, the chain rule? One half, that thing to the negative one half, right? But then chain rule times negative 2x, the derivative of the inside. Do you agree? Chain rule plus second stays the same. Derivative of the first, which is 2. All right? Again, I want to find critical numbers, so where this is 0 or undefined, let's get a common denominator. I can dump a 2 out, so that's not in the denominator. What is the denominator then? Root 100 minus x squared. The top becomes negative 2x squared. Now this guy, when you multiply by root 100 minus x squared to get the common denominator over itself, what does it become? 100 minus x squared uh, times 2. Good point. Thank you. All right. So I get maybe negative 100, or sorry, 100 minus 4x squared over root 100 minus x squared. Unless I made a mistake there. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So um, a prime is undefined if x is 10, but that would mean you're using a rectangle that goes all the way out to the edge, which therefore has no height. Now that's actually a minimum area, not a maximum area. So that's not good. Uh, that's a minimum. What about a prime equal to 0 at? Five or negative five, I suppose you could say. At five is what makes the numerator. Uh, now let's answer the question: What is the maximum area? Does x equal five answer that question? No, that's not an area. That's a dimension that yields the area. So, I mean, you can. I, this is a a prime positive to negative case, by the way. I didn't mentally look to see that's a max. But in terms of the area, if x of five is used. I would go here and say something like the area would be 2 times 5 times root 100 minus 25, or 10 root 75. I guess I could go 50 root 3 square units. That's the greatest possible area. Are you with me? All right. Somebody keeps saying no, or is that just my imagination? It <laughs> feels like I, when I say, are you with me, I'm hearing a no. But I just keep going because I don't really hear it. <laughs> um, what the heck? We're not going to get to questions on the use of worksheet anyway, so let's just do this one, shall we? Yeah. All right. Um, see if you can get started. Let's try this one, please. This is a AP multiple choice question. It's not, uh, it's not as... Uh, Real world, it's more of a, a theoretical exercise. But this is the kind of thing in physics, if you want to know when is the comet closest to the planet, this is that kind of question. It's just kind of simplified for you. Okay, so that'll be a <laughs> By the way, the UNC math competition is next Thursday, Monday, and or first and second period. If you are interested, you are cordially invited. You might do well. It's kind of fun to think. Um, if you miss my class, I guess I could talk about giving you a pass. You would miss my class probably. So I could give you a pass on the horn probably. Maybe I'll think about that. Um, but that's next Thursday. I know it's hard to miss class, but it's just first and second period.
Some people can see this without the graph, but I definitely think the graph is helpful. Here's a point over here, three, two. Okay. To get yourself going, you might consider, all right, it's nearest when there's some point on the curve x, y. x, y, there's a lot of points on the curve, obviously. But when this distance is at its least, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of what you're trying to optimize, you're trying to minimize or maximize? Mm -hmm. Minimize distance. What's a distance equation? The square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. One of the points I have is 3, 2. So I could go x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared. x, y represents some point on the curve. Yeah. All right. So now what do you think? I guess that's your average <laughs> okay, well, I'm trying to maximize or minimize distance. I want d prime negative to positive, but I don't want to take a derivative if there are the variables. So I look for another relationship. What is it? Yeah, y equals 2 minus x squared. Distance is. And then you'd sub in y minus All right. Hey, have a great day. I, uh, nothing is due because we did not get to that fun sheet. So, and this is due Monday. Good test. Oh, I forgot to stop this recording. <laughs>